that is in compared to earth it is nearly 81% mass that means 81% of earth mass is the mass of venus and the radius is 0.95% so that means 95% of earth radius and its density is this one and in, this fact becomes very very important in terms of transit that is the mean distance from the sun is this one but usually in astrophysics we use a term astronomical unit that means the unit that is the distance between sun and earth if we consider the distance between sun and earth is one the distance from sun to the uh, venus is 0.72 that means tends to the sun. So it is uh, roughly speaking about 20th part, of course because of the elliptical orbit the distance varies which we have uh, sufficient data but still it is about 27-28% close to the sun and it is about 72-73% far from the sun. Now if you think okay this is very close to the sun so it should have uh, eclipse like effect but if you look into the moon it is just 0.273 earth's mean radius and the distance from the earth is much less than this one you see uh, the uh, earth moon distance uh, sorry this distance is something like thin crore kilometer 360 degree but you see the temperature here is 482 degree celsius the average temperature and the pressure is 92 bar that means so that's why it is uh, scientists or astrophysicists never look on life on that planet rather they look on Mars because of such, some factors that uh, we cannot think of this one now uh, as I said most of the parameters have been estimated that is because the, with every event uh, scientists to bring about it consists mainly of carbon dioxide and nitrogen in, interestingly some of the material cannot exist for example hydrogen and helium which are monoxide and other compounds but mainly almost 99 percent more than 99 percent is carbon dioxide and nitrogen and you see it is as we go above, uh, above the surface of the uh, venus we see different layers of uh, material or the compounds and Venus is also known anciently and even today as morning star and evening star. And I have found a very interesting illustration of this one. Now, uh, what I'm trying to show here is to rise, and before the sun rises, we will see a star coming, and then as soon as the sun arrives, the star disappears. That is, it will not disappear, but because of the bright sun, it is not visible to naked eye. So, this is why. So in earlier days or even today when people look into the sky and if they see some star is coming emerging, we say oh the morning star is coming now the sun sign should be very strong. So this is and in this picture I have tried to see uh, very clearly when the Venus and the sun and the earth are in the system how it feels, where the sun is and similarly just after the sunset, this is the picture when sun sets. As soon as you see in this picture, as soon as the sun's brightness decreases, we will see something on the sky which is very very bright. And uh, for your information, after after the moon, this is the brightest thing we can see in the sky with our naked eye. That means now, okay, now uh, before Galileo uh, observed um, the Venus, what people thought before that was Earth and Sun are something like a binary system, like a dumbbell set, and all the planets they move around somewhere making them center this was a hypothesis but think behind or on the other side of the uh, axis but these planets are rotating the sun not the earth so this is also one of the very interesting fact that i want to share and even though he discovered that venus was also i don't know how to pronounce this this one exactly and they have, they have different missions one two three four and so on and they have various pictures of venus and this was one of the first planets where mankind could send a uh, set or a spacecraft and this was the first planet to reach and uh, as i said there are many uh, and they have even named this is a very large structure on the surface i will come to this one again so i will try to skip this one because i have other slides to show of course uh, Venus and this is compared to Earth it is how it looks like and the topology red means the height, highest point and the blue is the lowest point of course green and other colors lie in between and uh, if we look into the cutaway structure of the Venus uh, this image again this one was supposed to be red which is here maybe to impress you and really to make you believe I will just turn once this side I don't know if you can see this 
This is uh, this looks red in my laptop, and I had tried to show this in different colors. But very interesting thing is that Venus has no magnetic field, just like uh, we have magnetic field on Earth. And uh, of course, uh, sometimes we try to explain the phenomena that goes on Venus, but we are not yet sure what is the cause of magnetism on Earth and why it rotates. But it still, it has been clear that there is no magnetic field on the Venus. And because of which there are some phenomena, and because of which there are some gases, and I am just trying to show pictures from different satellites, and the picture looks different. That you take picture with ordinary camera, most of the time we see is reflection from the cloud, not from the surface. So that's why it also shows very interesting picture. Now going back to the transit part, if we look from the top, this is the view from Earth compared to the distance from the sun. This is how they move. But uh, and this is an animated picture. The Earth started, if I start tracing the Earth here and the Venus here, because of difference in rotation and also the size of the orbits, what you see is, okay, let me start it once again. We started tracing Earth from here. If you can hardly see a blue color or maybe it's visible here. And the Venus started from here, but it has already completed the cycle. And it will meet Earth somewhere. Okay, here, nearly 1.5 times. And this is where the Sun, Earth, and the Venus come into the same line. But this is, okay, it takes about 224 days for the Venus, 24 Earth days, to Venus to complete uh, cycle or the, complete the orbit around the uh, Sun, which is 1.6 times the, uh, no, not 6 times, but this would be divided by, I, I made a mistake there. Now, this is a very obvious question when we discuss about Venus. Why not every uh, year we see um, passing or transit? That is because the paths are elliptical, but they are not in the same plane. I have tried to explain this in terms of also a paper that will come later. You see, Venus moves like this and the Earth moves like this. Sometimes, without transit, they may come into contact. For example, I will show this in the next picture, so okay, let's see in this one. Now, in these two pictures, I am very sorry, it's not only sorry, but I, I didn't I could not show exactly what I wanted to show. But if you look into this picture, this is the plane of the Earth. That means Earth rotates like this, but the plane of Venus is somewhere like this. So it rotates always like this. And at this point, the picture looks a, a bit different in two dimensions, but what actually happens is the Sun and Earth are in the same line and the Venus is also in the same line, but it is little below because of the plane, which I will demonstrate in, term, in paper plate astrophysics as I said. 